All right. Um, <clears throat> so uh, today I'm just going to be talking a little bit about um, uh, what antibiotic stewardship is. Just start from the basics, like uh, uh, Dr. Suresh Kumar said, some guidelines from in Infectious Diseases Society of America and uh, Center for Disease Control. Uh, and a curriculum that uh, um, Infectious Diseases Society of America has actually proposed for training our fellows. Uh, fellowship in infectious diseases is a two or three year uh, uh, um, post, post, right? It's almost like a DM after uh, doing an MD and DM. So we do our um, MD in internal medicine, and then we do a two or three year fellowship in infectious diseases dedicated completely uh, to the training of infectious diseases. And um, we use uh, some of these curricular uh, tidbits for training our fellows. In addition to them uh, being in the hospitals where they are actually practicing this and also part of the antibiotic uh, stewardship committees. Uh, antibiotic stewardship, in fact, was introduced way back in 2004 or 2005 uh, when I was in um, residency in, in fellowship training. Um, I used to be um, uh, uh, part of these com committees, which was new at that time. And now it has become uh, an, uh, a, an important part of almost all hospitals. It is a quality measure, uh, CMS, uh, Medicare, all of these, um, uh, these uh, agencies are actually looking for how a hospital uh, takes care of uh, uh, their patients and their patient safety. Uh, and this is one of the index uh, of having an antibiotic um, stewardship program in the institution so our patients can remain safe and we are not contributing any further to a development of resistance. So antimicrobial stewardship is defined as a consensus statement from uh, IDSA, uh, the Society of Healthcare Epidemiology of America, as well as Pediatric Infectious Diseases Society, as a coordinated uh, intervention designed to improve and measure appropriate use of antibiotic agents, as well as promoting the selection of optimal drug regimens using the correct dose, duration of therapy, and route of administration. Um, so uh, we know antibiotics actually save lives. Um, uh, unfortunately, in some of the countries, we uh, can get antibiotics over the counter. That's not the case here in the United States. It's, it's really used uh, very carefully. Uh, but despite that, um, the side effects and uh, the development of resistance is a big problem. People who are admitted to the hospitals, about 20% of them can actually have serious adverse effects from antibiotics. So unintended uh, side effects. And then you also have uh, the chance of development of resistance, which is significant, as I'll mention later. So 202 million outpatient prescriptions for antibiotics are, were handed out um, as of uh, 2019. This is a report from CDC. And in US doctor's offices and emergency departments, about 28% of antibiotic uh, uh, courses prescribed uh, each year are deemed to be unnecessary. Um, according to CDC, again, in that 2019 report, they, they uh, uh, found that about 2.8 million um, antibiotic resistant infections occurred in the United States and about uh, 35,000 people died as a result of that. So this is a significant problem. Uh, with comprehensive programs and microbial stewardship programs, uh, there is a demonstrated decrease in the use of antibiotics and, uh, and to a great extent, and also a significant cost uh, reduction and uh, cost savings that's associated with it. Uh, so between 2019 and 2020, again, a CDC report shows that there has been a significant reduction in the prescriptions doled out per 1,000 population, as you can see with this uh, bar graph. And that's for uh, all the antibiotic classes. Hospital antibiotic stewardship programs is really what I'm going to be focusing on. Um, antibiotic stewardships um, uh, can be instituted in the hospital as a discharge program, as a transition of care program, as an outpatient program that Dr. Anguti is going to be talking about, and then as a global program with WHO focuses on quite a bit. Um, but I'm going to be focusing on the hospital stewardship programs. Um, 
And these programs are initiatives, again, to make sure that uh, patient safety is promoted with programs and protocols and best practices that we have in place uh, to uh, improve and manage the care, the care of our patients uh, with appropriate use of antibiotics. So you want to use the right antibiotic at the right time, the right dose, and the right duration. Uh, so what do these um, antibiotic stewardship programs uh, benefit us by? They protect our patients from unintended consequences of antibiotics. They improve clinical out outcomes, so patient safety is enhanced, and they help us combat antibiotic resistance. Uh, this is therefore uh, now a national priority for the last few years and remains so. Uh, for Infectious Diseases Society of America, this is one of the uh, priorities as well. Um, I'll, I'll quickly give an example of a case. This is something that we see um, in the hospitals quite often. And a, a more complicated version of this would be, would, would be where infectious diseases is consulted. Uh, but this is seen in the hospital quite often. Let's say a 41-year-old uh, female with cystic fibrosis and a history of carbapenem-resistant E. coli in her sputum had been treated with tigacycline in the past. So she comes to the hospital with worsening cough and shortness of breath, and her sputum um, culture is pending. Her PCR for COVID and respiratory viruses was negative. And what would be a good presumptive antibiotic choice for this patient? I refrain from using the word empiric. Empiric means you don't know what you're doing. Presumptive is a better word rather than empiric. So a uh, presumptive antibiotic choice for this patient um, would you use zosin? Would you use levofloxacin? Would you use meropenem? Or would you go back to tigacycline? So our pharmacy colleagues actually help us a lot with situations like that. And I would probably choose the same um, a treatment as in the past because you know that this patient has had uh, multidrug resistant infections. Coming to the core members of the antibiotic uh, stewardship team, we have an infectious diseases physician. We have, in fact, a, a people from the um, hospital hospitalist teams, uh, uh, physicians who are directly involved in taking care of the patients, clinical pharmacists with infectious diseases training. They have a residency in infectious diseases. So after they get their PharmD, their, um, that's a doctorate in pharmacy, they additionally undergo two years of training. So I'm uh, iterating this again because this is an intensive training that people undergo uh, before practicing. Uh, but again, this is a group effort. And uh, so we also have uh, um, a, a clinical microbiologist who's included uh, an information system specialist, infection prevention specialist, and hospital epidemi epidemiologist to make this optimal. Uh, and this gets a lot of support from the uh, leadership, which is advocated for by IDSA as well as CDC, and a lot of collaboration between all these, uh, these people who are involved in the care. So it is a diverse team of specialists. And um, I'm going to be running through this because um, of the lack of time, but uh, you can see all the functions that antibiotic stewardship as a group performs, um, enhancing inf infection prevention, uh, controlling um, infection source, giving the right antibiotic, uh, making sure that the um, tracking and um, monitoring of these antibiotics is done correctly, and a big piece is education. IDSC says the core strategies are you uh, uh, perform a prospective audit and intervention along with feedback to the prescribers, uh, or you have a, a pre-authorization or a formulary restriction, which is what we see in a lot of the uh, drugs for the multi-drug resistant organisms. There's a restriction which uh, is in fact, um, re which requires uh, permission from our pharmacy uh, colleagues or um, the uh, infectious diseases team. And uh, Dr. Downen will talk more about that. Um, education is a big piece, like I said. Uh, we also want to influence prescribing behavior with the education that is ongoing all the time. And then guidelines, which will use local microbiology and uh, resistance patterns uh, for uh, determining uh, guidelines which, are, uh, which would be applicable locally. So a uh, computer physician order, ent order entry, uh, the um, uh, medical records, electronic medical records are a big part of uh, making sure how we track, et cetera. Some core strategies, combination therapy for multidrug resistant organisms, streamlining or de-escalation of therapy is very important. 
and then dose optim optimization using pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamic principles, where our pharmacy colleagues are very, very essential for our, uh, for our uh, patients. Uh, parenteral to oral conversion should be done in an optimal way, especially if the um, antibiotics are 100% bioavailable. And then a microbial, uh, antimicrobial cycling. Um, although some people um, do this, this is not a good, uh, high, highly recommended. Actually, IDSC recommends against this uh, a C3 recommendation, which means it's not, it's not a very great level of evidence for this. Uh, again, strategies for surveillance, there's computer-based surveillance, and also um, when uh, microbiology labs are utilized, uh, their help, in fact, particularly for providing patient-specific cultures and uh, susceptibility data to optimize individual care is very useful. Uh, the AMS program, Antimicrobial Stewardship Program, uh, had an update in 2016 with some recommendations, which talks about people who have a risk, high risk of uh, C. diff infection. Uh, when you manage them, you want to make sure that you are reducing um, the use of antibiotics or using them wisely in these patients. Antibiotic timeouts, stop orders can be placed, but this is a second after um, uh, you have a proactive um, uh, approach for uh, prescribing antibiotics. Uh, this is another approach, but uh, less effective as compared to the restrictions that we have. Um, and then also electronic medical records can be um, can incorporate uh, antimicrobial uh, stewardship principles, which are very useful as well. Um, I want to uh, specify people with uh, penicillin allergies, listed penicillin allergies, you want to make sure that they're truly allergic. So a skin test uh, called prepen, uh, that is uh, one of the commercial tests that's available. We use that in the hospital. Our pharmacy colleagues help us uh, administer this. Our fellows in training help us administer this. Um, and if the uh, uh, penicillin uh, skin test is negative, we go ahead and use it. A lot of times these allergies are incorrectly um, documented so um, and and over documented so um, uh, 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 there's this piece of information which is very useful and we lose out a, a good uh, group of drugs just because of that incorrect doc incorrect documentation and then uh, also um, we want to use the shortest effective duration of therapy for these uh, these medications uh, so uh, that's a balance that we always need to look at Microbiology lab cannot underestimate how important they are. They can hide the, the, uh, the data for um, an antibiotic uh, susceptibility if you don't want certain antibiotics to show up for everybody. Rapid viral tests, uh, blood tests with PCRs are now becoming very popular. Procalcitonin in the ICU. Um, ICU teams are, are believe differently from infectious diseases teams there. Uh, and then special populations, people with hematological malignancies, fungal-based markers. Um, these are all uh, useful tools that we use in, um, um, in uh, stewardship. Uh, and then again, uh, uh, people in nursing homes, uh, the, there's a, a whole stewardship core um, of, uh, curriculum as well as a recommendation for uh, how to manage people in uh, nursing homes. CDC says the same thing, hospital leadership buy-in is very necessary. Um, and uh, for action, again, their uh, recommendations are the same. They stress particularly on nurse-based interventions and nurse education, in addition to what uh, IDSA has said. Um, again, antibiotic prescription um, are, uh, are overdone. 79% uh, of people with uh, community-acquired pneumonia, 77% people with urinary tract infections, have required prescriptions which uh, have been given prescriptions which were not supposed to be given. Uh, and um, I just wanted to show what tracking by CDC looks like. This is just one of the graphs I got from uh, the uh, National Healthcare um, uh, System Network where uh, you're able to track almost any antibiotic. It's done meticulously and beautifully uh, across the board, what kind of a hospital setup it is. It is a small hospital, big hospital. All this is beautifully tracked with the information systems that's, uh, um, that's available. Um, and the curriculum, very briefly, uh, IDSA has a new curriculum 
uh, for uh, anybody that wants to get more education. And it talks about it's it's a primer with fundamentals of pharmacology and microbiology, um, and it's case based and very nice to read. So this is what it looks like, and uh, it's available for anybody. We use this for training our fellows in in um, uh, infectious diseases as well. Uh, there is an advanced curriculum for that as well. Uh, advanced antimicrobial stewardship teams: how to prepare them, how to coach them and how to uh, get a career in antimicrobial stewardship as well. So people who are looking for that, they, they themselves can actually um, take that course as well. Uh, so to summarize, um, use targeted and safe antibiotic therapies. Uh, if there's a true penicillin allergy, find out if it's that fluoroquinolones when you're discharging someone with it. Uh, is it a, are there any safer alternatives? Outpatient parenteral antibiotic uh, therapy um, needs to be given a lot of thought. Use shortest effective antibiotic durations. So five days, seven days, five days for community acquired pneumonia, hospital acquired pneumonia, non purulent cellulitis, et cetera. And document and communicate a structured and timely discharge summary is very, very important to have the plan with end of therapy uh, and then educate patients and caregivers which is a very, very important piece um, of training them as well. So I think I'm at um, 12 seconds left, uh, and this is my last slide. I will stop right there and hand the stage over to Dr. Downen.